you were chatting about, obviously, the altercation with Roy going back to Sunderland days. But before we get into that, just tell us a little bit about the background of Sunderland you moved to from Mansfield. Good move. Fans' favourite. I think you were runner-up to Dean Whitehead and Player of the Year. Um, he's got relegated. And then I think Big Quinny was in charge, wasn't he, for a little bit of a few weeks before Roy came in. But tell us a little bit about when Roy took over. Like, What, what were your initial thoughts or maybe the players' feelings of this legendary, iconic player taking his first steps into management? Well, it was, a, it was a weird one for me because my family's Man United and obviously growing up I watched a lot of Man United and he was one of my idols. So for him to be coming in and, and being my gaffer, it was like a, a dream come true, if you like. Um, you know, he used to join in in training and he was absolutely ridiculous. He was phenomenal. Um, but his standards were that high and I think he was used to you know, players of United calibre, um, I think he got frustrated quite quickly with, with some of us, you know. So he came in the August time, you were kind of in and out of the team up until maybe November. So was, before that altercation that you did have, row that you had, whatever way you want to call it, like, th- was there any grumblings between you and him? Is th- had this been coming or was it kind of out of the blue? No, it, it, it was pretty much out of the blue. Obviously, I was in and out of the team. I think we'd been beat the week before, before it all kicked off with me and him. Um, and I'd not played that well. That's probably why I wasn't in, involved in the training session. So um, I didn't see it coming, no, but I was young and hot-headed myself and mm. I always stood up for myself. I always have done. And when this happened in training and I, I was just stood watching in the cold, I just thought, no, this is this can't happen. I, I, you know, if I'm going to be stood here, I'd rather go in and, go in the gym or do something active do you know what I mean so it all kicked off and you know I'm not saying anything that's not already been in his book you know what I mean so things happened and you know I was away the next day after the the argument we had so for anybody that's not quite aware of like training ground kind of scenarios and it was an 11 v 11 obviously there was more than 22 players in and around training that day. So you were left yeah. on the soil. And, it, and this quite often happens, does it, with mainly younger players. You very rarely get it with established senior players, which you obviously were at that time. So understandably felt a little bit annoyed. And then, so, goes inside and in, a, in his office, and he's, he's mentioned it, as you've already said, in, your, in his book. Um, and he, he quite admired you for the way you stood up to him. Yeah, well, as you've touched on there in training, you do the 11v11s and usually it's either trialists or kids that sort of sit out and watch while the lads are training. So it was a bit, it was hard for me to, to swallow watching it and, and being involved in that. So I've, I've started walking in, he started shouting at me. We've argued a little bit, I've carried on walking in, he's told me not to and pleasantries were involved in all that and then obviously I've gone in we've had a massive argument in his office nearly come to blows and stuff so the next day literally as I was leaving he just said look this was a Thursday by the way so as I'm leaving his office he's just said keep your phone on that's you done so I got in the car spoke to my agent and the next day I'm down at Stoke. So so there was no signs of this like sometimes now, I've had long moves where it happens quite quickly, but in the background, you know, your, your agent's speaking to you about, look, such and such might be interested in you. But this has come just out of the blue and maybe because of the, the volatile nature of him and you standing up to him. And I think he's mentioned as well that it was the first time a player really stood up to him in that fashion. Yeah, I, I didn't see it come in, that's for sure. There was no, there was nothing in the background going on. I just... Because I was young as well myself and, like I said, hot-headed and I was in and out of the team, I was already kind of getting frustrated. So when this happened, that it, for me, it didn't matter that it was Roy Keane. I didn't care. I didn't, it doesn't matter who the gaffer is. If I don't agree with something, then that's just my way. So, no, I didn't see it coming and it did happen really, really quickly. And in hindsight, it was a great thing for me because I went on and played the best yeah. stuff that I've played at Stoke. So he's obviously been in the the news with the Harry Arthur, John Walters. Martin was the one who actually brought it up pre uh, international meetup a couple of weeks ago. So it certainly hasn't helped things. Um, then we had the unfortunate incident where Stephen Ward's WhatsApp got leaked. 
um, naive on his part, of, of course. And he <laughs> felt he should quite rightly feel betrayed that it's got out certainly between between friends. Um, but when you mm. listen to what's said and what he's saying, and I don't think Steve Moore in any way is being inflammatory about the way that Roy is. Can you see it though? Can you, so you've obviously witnessed it firsthand. So can you see where Stephen Ward is coming from on it? Well, I, I, I don't think he's lied at all because of them things that has been said and Ward he said that he's he's heard. They were said to me when we were sat in the office and he sat across from me and we we're arguing. The c word must have been mentioned. I'm not kidding. Thirty times before I stood up and got went up to walk out. So I, I can see that he's probably said them. I just. I think football's changing so much, mate, and the world's changing mm. so much that you should know by now that you can't go speaking to people like that. There's a certain way out to speak. There's, we've spoke about it before, the modern-day footballer and stuff. You, you just you have to know your players and how to handle players and how to speak to players, and I think he's obviously just gone about it the wrong way. Yeah, so the incident happened with you was 12 years ago, and it's hard to believe it's that long. So now, yeah. firstly, he's not actually the manager which has been pointed out by Harry Arthur, by all accounts, allegedly by via Stephen Ward's um, leaked WhatsApp. And secondly, you've, you've just touched on it. Players are different. Society is different. So this type of shenanigans, it just shouldn't be going on, especially from an assistant manager. I can't remember in my time, in 20 years playing football, of an assistant manager that was that antagonistic, that was that way inclined um, what, what's your take on him now as the assistant manager? If uh, it's, it's hard because it's international, you know, if it's at club level and a, if an assistant manager would have spoke to me like that, we would have probably been rolling on the grass. Um, but because it's international level and because it's Roy Keane and everything that comes with it, I think maybe the lads have sort of accepted it, if you like, um, but you just can't you can't do it. We you know, we've just touched on it there about society and how you speak to people these days and the words that you choose. You've got to be so, so careful. And I don't know what character Ariata's like. I know what Johnny Walters is yeah. like, and he obviously he, he didn't take it. So just know your players and how to how to speak to them and how to handle them. And it just seems that when Roy gets angry or when he doesn't agree with something, it just comes out and he just attacks and, and gets aggressive and He's got to learn from from doing things like that. You can't carry on doing that. Mm. 